evening, everybody. I think uh, we're ready. All right. This evening, we're going to be uh, have a presentation regarding the the blasting uh, effects of the energy wave to, to our structures. Um, the hopes are that we have the, the concept of the energy wave and the damages will be understood. You want to, uh, we get to start? Um, Let's see if this works here. I'm sorry? That's coming. All right, it's working. Beautiful. Again, good, good afternoon or good evening, everybody. My name is Miguel Martinez. I'm the chair of the Blastic Advisory Board. Uh, this evening, we're going to have a presentation on the effects of, of the energy wave that we're experiencing with the blasting. Just to give a brief background, um, I'm, my background is in architecture. I am not an engineer. Um, I was a member of the original Blasting Advisory Board, and after we sunsetted, I created my own group. A member of the group was an attorney and his office funded a study um, and although the study is, is ownership uh, within the, 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 uh, the office of the attorney, they've allowed me to, to share some of the facts and more importantly the concepts. So I'm not an engineer again, but I have an, a, a, a pretty decent understanding of the concepts and that as lay people what we need to know. We need to understand how this works and what's going on. So I started the study with providing a, a, a arbitrary radius of four miles. Everybody had complained about one particular mine, White Rock. So I did them as the focal point of the radius. And within that radius, I began to count uh, with a friend of mine, a realtor, to count how many homes are affected within that radius. We, we stopped counting at 40,000. It was soon discovered that the energy wave is being felt at 11 miles out, not just four miles. So if we increase the radius to 11 miles, we're over 100,000 structures affected. Keep in mind, or homes affected, keep in mind we need to add to that number municipal buildings, um, commercial properties, and whatnot, and infrastructure. White Rock in particular, the mine, so we can understand how the mining operations work, it, the operation itself is, is, a, uh, is comprised of three components. The three components work in a spiral configuration. Everybody sees if, if this particular mine, if you go to um, I-75 and the turnpike, you'll see a large blue crane. Affectionately, we call her Big Blue. Big Blue is a drag line crane. It has a bucket. The bucket is larger than a dump truck. So if it, it drops its load or the bucket into the water, into that, which is the actual pit, and it scoops out the lime rock. That really doesn't a cause effect for us, though. What actually causes effect for us are the three drilling machines that they, that they use. The three drilling machines have towers that are approximately 100 feet tall. They drill down about 85 feet down, and they fill those holes with explosives. They create a grid per, per blast that we feel. The grid is about 20 holes um, it, with a 16-foot separation. We'll get into that. The, in, in this particular slide, it's just an, an image off Google Earth. At the time of the slide, you could see the crane and the, on the lower middle of the screen, the, the, the drillers are at the diagonal bottom right corner of the upper water body. And on, on the upper part of that water body and to the left, you'll see the third uh, stage of this operation. Um, that is gravel that has been pulled out and piled. It's on the north side and on the west side of it are dump trucks that are are being loaded and they carry to get uh, to the cycling plant where they actually process this lime rock for its use. In the center of the water body to the left, you'll find a, a rectangle or a square. That square is an island and it actually is an ancient Indian burial ground. They have found uh, bones and, and relics there and, and they are respecting it as part of the, the, the uh, for the Indian uh, Historical uh, Society. In reality, White Rock is not the only mine in operation. 
And in reality, it's not the only mine affecting our area. In our area, Miami Lakes, we have three mines. Depending where you're located, you'll feel the, res the, the response of those three mines. In the county, there are quite a number of active mines. Dade County is different than Broward. Broward banned deep water mining. They only use uh, physical excavation, so it's shallow mining. In Dade County, which is A grade, A1 grade lime rock, is being used in the entire south uh, east of the United States, is being extracted out of Dade County. So the water bodies you see were once uh, mines that have been completed. The water that you see is the Biscayne Aquifer. The Biscayne Aquifer is, is our drinking water source, and they are blasting directly within the water body. Now, a number of years ago, the state sponsored a study. An engineering company called Respec was awarded the contract, and, and the, the study was to, to see what is going on, what is happening with this energy wave, and the amount of complaints that Tallahassee is receiving from us. In, the, in their study, they identified six regions of the state. The regions were, were divided by strata, and you'll notice that our area is the, the light purple in the southeast of the, of the state. The reason, the reason our region is different is the, the aquifer. The aquifer, for those that aren't familiar with it, is water. It's fresh drinking water that we're, we, where we extract our water from, um, and the land or the, the, the strata, the dirt, if you will, is like Swiss cheese. The water flows within the holes of the Swiss cheese and the, this material acts as a filter for it. However, because of that water, it also acts as a conduit to move the energy wave. The energy wave in water, water is incompressible. The energy wave carries great distances. And it's the same effect as when you throw a pebble in a lake, you see the ripples go across the lake. Now, again, notice the six regions the light green region north of in the Panhandle um, is mostly clay soil. In clay soil, the impact is, is lessened because it's dampened by the clay. So it really is not fair for each region to be governed the same. Each region has its own properties, and we must respect that. Now, if we go back to high school physics, I know most of us, uh, myself included, it, it may be a wash. We don't really remember well what happened in high school, but we'll, we're going to recap the, the lesson today. The properties of an energy wave are shown on, on, the, on the diagram. We have the amplitude, we have the frequency, in other words, the height, uh, the trough and crest, the uh, hot top and bottom of each wave from the baseline. We have the, the distance between each crest, which is your, your wavelength, and obviously the direction in which this wave is traveling. This is applicable to sound, to you know, the motion of, of uh, again, in the water. These are all energy properties. However, notice the, the red line, which is the base, or the red line is the baseline. Above it is a red arrow, which is the direction of the wave. State of Florida mandates one item for the energy wave produced by blasting. It's called PPP, PPV, peak particle velocity. And by definition, if we remember physics class again, velocity is speed and direction. Speed and direction. What does it have to do with the rest of the components of an energy wave? It doesn't. What we've uncovered or confirmed with our study is something that is known in an earthquake. An earthquake produce, produces four energy types, seismic energy types. A P wave, an S wave, a Raleigh wave, and a Love wave. Each energy type has its their own specific properties. This is the payload of an energy wave. So you'll see that the Love wave creates a shear effect. The earth moves side to side, tearing apart anything that, as, it, as it flows through the, the earth. The Raleigh wave is rolling on the surface, similar to an ocean uh, wave that you could bob up and down sitting in a boat, let's say, and you have the same effect. The S wave is, is a kind of like a, um, a slinky, if you will. As it, as it goes forward, it, it rolls. So if you're on a surfboard, it's what pushes you forward. 
And finally, the P wave. The P wave is like an inchworm, where it expands and contracts, but also moving in a forward direction. It's the, the energy wave produced by blasting has these four components as a payload with it, within it. Realize that the, the reason for the energy wave being produced is to break rock. It's not meant to stop. It's not meant to not harm other things. The only reason it's for is to break the rock. Now, what has been discovered, along with these energy waves, seismic energy waves, is an air pressure. This is also being ignored. Air pressure happens from a, a, uh, quickly expanding gases from the explosion. Although it's minor in comparison to the seismic waves, it is significant and we are measuring it as well. This diagram is from a study that was done for coal mining. In coal mining, they use surface explosions to extract and, and break up the, the coal. In our case, the explosions are happening within a tower underground. However, the air, when, it, when the expanding gases of the explosion ejects from the hole of the, of, the, of the drill and goes to the atmosphere, we're feeling that. We're measuring it. It is not, again, not as significant as in the coal. However, we have measured that it is moving our homes, our trusses as an example, by a quarter of a centimeter. Our houses are expanding by a quarter centimeter, thus causing cracks in our drywall. This is what's generating it. You also notice in this diagram, to take advantage of the diagram, is the energy waves that are being produced underground reflect and reflect. Uh, um, they reflect and, and they bounce, basically, as they, they go through the strata. This is why when you're in different areas with our houses, we feel differently. Everybody feels the energy wave differently. It depends on your location, the geometry of the energy wave as it bounces through and moving towards, towards our homes. We're going to take, for example, a typical Miami Lakes home. The, the dashed lines on either side are representative of the property boundary. These are the property lines. This particular house, we're going to uh, consider an 80-foot separation between the property lines. It's a typical lot of 80 by 100, 100 deep, 80 wide. If we were to put this house on a street, we'd line the houses up next to each other, separating the, the property uh, property lines, each boundary, the red line shows the energy wave. And if you call from the diagram of the energy wave, it's a sine curve. It goes up and down. The sine curve of a blast energy wave, we've measured at three kilometers long. The significance of this is that the energy wave could hit your, your house from below or above, depending where you are situated in, at the location of, of the, uh, of the, the the wave itself. You can be in the middle where it goes under or over your home and you don't feel anything. We have we hear people complaining that their neighbors are crazy or they didn't feel anything or you know it doesn't happen and vice versa or how can you not feel it blah blah. This is the reason. Because if the neighbor in the middle who got hit from below, believe me they'll feel it. And then and the next door neighbor didn't feel anything. This is why. Now Realize that what they're doing is breaking rock, and they're looking for the most efficient way to break the rock. So when you add the energy wave with its payload, we're effectively widening the effectiveness of the energy wave. So the circles represent the payload as it's carried with the energy wave through. So in, in effect, the, the widening of this energy wave will, will get more houses, let's say. However, remember that the state law is that red arrow, the PPV, peak particle velocity. It's measured at 0 0.05 uh, inches per second squared. It's the speed of that, that uh, energy wave in a direction. It's irrelevant to the payload, irrelevant uh, to the sine curve. It's also irrelevant to the air pressure. The arc lines here represent the air pressure that we're also feeling. Understand that air pressure moves faster than the seismic wave. Humans feel the air pressure. So you, although you may not feel the seismic movement, you may feel the air pressure. And, it, and, and it's definite. You, you can feel it. Animals also feel this. In some cases, like in earthquakes or tidal waves, something like that, you'll hear stories that 
The animals knew when they ran. They ran before the, the, the thing hit. How'd they know? This is how they know. The air pressure wave is faster than the seismic wave. So to recap, there's four different energy wa seismic waves that are being produced. Remember the each, each of them and the property of each. This particular home, um, I was sent this video, short clip, and the owner came home from work one day to discover the tiles of his porch were broken. He considered the neighborhood kids had pulled a prank on him and damaged his home. Fortunately, he had security cameras, and he pulled the security cameras in to see if he was able to catch which kid of the neighborhood damaged his tile. I want you to put your, your focus on the bottom right corner at the base of the column and watch. Okay, you can literally see the tiles are breaking in order as the energy wave travels across his porch. So what is happening here? <clears throat> what is happening is two different materials that have a, a each, each material has a natural vibration and by introducing an energy wave, we're affecting that vibration and breaking the adherence of the tile, the, the thin set, let's say, the tile to, the, to the, the concrete floor. Now, again, this is nothing new. These studies have been going on for a long time. Unfortunately, the studies have been done for coal, which is the, the most common mining in, in the United States. It has been intentionally ignored in Florida, especially in South Florida in the, in, over the Biscayne Aquifer. The energy wave going through it and the effects are similar. The energy wave is the same. So this diagram from one of the studies shows the effects, of, as you saw, the different types of energy wave properties, how the reaction of a wood structure, um, how it, it, is it affected. You'll see this overturning moment, which is on the right side as the house lifts off the foundation. You'll see uh, the, the side to side sway in the middle and, and the, uh, on the, the one on the left where it's actually pushing the house over. This is wood. Now wood is more forgiving. Wood is more flexible. It's not a rigid structure as we have here. Rigid structures, concrete and masonry, and reinforced with steel is, what, is how we build in South Florida. This is not as common up north. This is an actual computer model of the energy waves recorded placed on, on a, to a computer model to see the hot spots and to see wh what's affected and what's not. A few significant things on this, to see on this. You're gonna see on, on the bottom of the wall where the line, there's a line there, a few inches up from the, from the bottom. That's the, the, the foundation connection to the slab, your, your first floor slab. The wall at this point, be, it becomes, it's called a pin connection or cantilever. If you were to take a cantilever and turn it vertically, how it flexes. The flexion point is the line, uh, that, that, the line across the bottom. You're also gonna see the hot spots and the, each hot spot lights up the reinforcement of a wall. Towards the center uh, on, the, in the, on the right side, you're gonna see where the windows are. Each window area is, a, is one hot spot as opposed to the corner. The corner is reinforced by its own nature because it it's a, it's, has two sides obviously perpendicular to each other. Um, you'll also see the, what's called the roof diagram. The roof system, you're gonna see how it's red on the ceiling inside if you look closely and how it's heated or highlighted uh, where the trusses are. Now, that same energy that we've recorded, we put it through a computer model. And this model represents the response of a reinforced masonry structure. As the energy wave goes through, you'll notice how it's reflective of the, the hot spots on the previous image. Moreover, you'll see the ceiling inside the house, how it's taking the, the, the effect. So for those of us that have, especially when you have cathedral ceilings, you really see the damage, and the stress points become the connections of your drywall sheets. So the lines typically happen at the, at the edges of the drywall. Also take note of the openings. The openings are being torsioned. It's, it's racking, it's called. They become a, a, a somewhat of a, of a, of a Wow, now I gotta go, never mind physics, go back to geometry. A rhomboid, a 
rhomboid has two um, acute angles and two obtuse angles. The acute angle is where it's getting pinched, less than 90. Obtuse is more than 90. Now, recall, masonry structures is concrete and steel. Steel is a, is a holds, has strength in, in tensile, pulling. Concrete has strength in compression, pushing. So where the angle becomes open more than 90, you're in, in tensile. Remember those facts. I'm constantly getting asked, how do we know I have damage? I, or I don't have any damage. And I said, I highly doubt it. It's highly likely you, ha you do have damage. You just don't know what you're looking at. Now, recall the diagrams that along the, the slab connection to the wall, we'll have the, the, in, this, in this picture, this photograph, you see the, the a hairline crack starting from the corner. That is the moment or that connect, pin connection bending and it begins to separate and break the, the connection from the concrete masonry wall to the slab. Now, this is a hairline crack. This building is three years old in the photograph and you could see the, the significant crack in, in, the, in the damage of the wall already. If you go to the opposite side of the structure and the, that, well, opposite side meaning the first damage starts at the closest corner to the mine. In other words, what receives the energy first? When you go to the opposite side of the house, you're gonna have a response similar to the computer model and you're gonna see damages, if you look closely where the arrow's pointing, is a diagonal crack emanating from the corner. That corner is being expanded. It's opening more than 90. It's intention, not compression. And you will find similarly to every opening on that same wall, a crack on the same side because all those openings are being torsioned in the same manner. This particular structure is a home that's 30 years old. Now we see that the damage, the bottom crack along the foundation line, but as time progresses, it water will wick in. As the crack absorbs water, we have further damage. As we know, water entering a structure, it's not a good thing. You see the staining uh, as the, the water rots and whatnot. You're also gonna see step cracking in this photograph. Step cracking is the individual blocks that are now shifting. This is common. This typically is seen on the corners uh, as well. This structure here is 14 years old at the time of the photograph. You're gonna see each component of the structural system is highlighted by the cracks and damages. You need to look close, but you could see the columns, reinforced columns, the masonry, each, each uh, brick or, or block line, um, step cracks at the, from the corners. Every typical standard damage is shown here. This building is under the, the newer code or the building code. The previous one is on the latest code. So they claim, the miners claim, you go to their website, that damages like this occur because of slamming doors, that their energy wave is less than a slamming door. I have never seen a slamming door damage a masonry wall. And similar damage in structures across a large area. In these cases, these two structures, a home on the left and a, an office on the right, are attempting to be repaired. The reality is you cannot repair these type of damages in this manner. This is only to paint and cover the damages. You're hiding it. It's something we need to be made aware of because if the damages are existing that way, we are weakening the structure. Again, you can see that the masonry blocks are all highlighted by, by what has been covered. Now we're gonna get into what I consider secondary damages. There is a phenomenon that happens called liquefaction. It's been debated whether it's occurring here, but I could tell you I've witnessed it. By definition, liquefaction is something that is a, a phenomenon that happens quickly. We're seeing it happen slowly. In the top left uh, photograph, there's an arrow pointing to a crack that's happening diagonally from the, the joint between the column and the beam. That's a porch column. 
that porch column is 10 feet tall, and I personally measured it with a level, and it was out of plumb by two and a quarter inches. A 16 inch column that's out of level, out of plumb by two and a quarter inches, has the potential to fall. The crack that you see, there has to be a complementary crack to match it. The other, the crack would be on the opposite side of the, of the roof, the roof attachment, as seen by the second home. These, are, these two are not the same home and they have the same damages. Take note on the, on the other photograph, look at the angle of the porch. That is not your eyes deceiving you and that's not Photoshop. That porch is leaning down and it's, and it's very plain to see. You can see where they've repaired the tiles at the plane of the, the face of the home, which obviously is the stress point, where the tiles are popping. I'll, I wanna add also, when you have damages like this to your roof, it goes without say that water intrusion is then your third uh, tertiary problem entering the home. By the way, these are called from differential settlement. As the soil conditions vibrate, the, the structure sitting on top of it will move and shift. These two photographs, if, if not sad, it's comical, you have to laugh at it. <laughs> the top left corner, if you look at this person's driveway, a small car physically cannot drive up it. It's as if the concrete has bent. It's an 18 inch difference between the, the drive and the grade, the adjacent grade. In construction in South Florida, or in Florida in this case, um, there's a, th a process called demucking. So there is organic soil created, that, uh, a top layer of organic soil, it's created from the Everglades, that obviously all our area was once the Everglades. So there's a significant amount of organic soil. It's very rich organic material. Great for, for vegetables and your gardening uh, bed and whatnot. It's not good for construction. And the reason is, is any organic material has a life cycle, and once it dies, it becomes le it holds less volume. With the less volume, whatever's on top of it collapses. There's no support for it. So by code, we have to remove or demuck five feet from the boundary of the of the footprint of, of the pad of the structure. So notice at the top left of the driveway, we're within the five foot mark of the house. And then obviously to the sidewalk, which has also been treated and, uh, and replaced in this case. So in this particular neighborhood, the average driveway is about eight years old, even though the neighborhood's over 50 years old. In the other photograph, it's a freestanding post, the column, supporting a fence and a gate. Notice that the post is leaning away from the gate. The gate is the only load on this post. So if you have a load that's pulling down, how can the post pull away? That's differential settlement through liquefaction. Now, something that's happening here in Miami Lakes, I hear very frequently, very common, and they're in shock when, when I show them what it actually is happening. And people tell me all the time that their pool decks are cracking. The reality is the pool deck is not cracking or settling. The pool deck is cracking because the pool is being lifted out of the ground. This is another phenomenon of liquefaction. What's below the ground pops up. So you'll notice in a series of photographs, as this pool begins to raise, the separation between the pool deck and the coping, how it grows. On that top left picture, you could see that the skimmer uh, lid that means there's plumbing connected to there. Plumbing cannot take a break of, or movement of an inch. It cracks. If your pool has an auto filler, check your water bill. As this house had a $600 water bill month to month because the pool was automatically filling because the pipes were cracked under the deck. I hear that story over and over and over. These is infrastructure. We have a problem in this area for flooding, street flooding. It's a multitude of problems. This isn't the only cause, but this is a major cause, uh, one of the components of it. And you're gonna notice the manhole is literally being raised from the street and the water uh, main connectors are sinking. 
That's differential settlement. Now the manhole, is, it's a, um, think of a pipe vertical with a lid and base. It's a chamber. And in it, as the street drains, it uses a gravity system to drain from manhole to manhole as it runs out to wherever the, the water gets processed. It if to run from manhole to manhole, it has to be gravity fed and it has to be aligned by elevation, by the heights. If the height is shifting, how do we expect the, the water to flow properly? Now, if you recall at the beginning, the drillers drill a series of holes and make a grid for the, um, for the, for the actual blast. Traditionally, it, they do the 20 holes and they blast this at one shot. That gives a pretty significant blast. Imagine, if you will, the, ed, the bottom edge is the, the water body, the, the, uh, the pit, whereas the, it blasts, all the gravel that, that is broken from this blast falls into that pit. Now I ask you, what's the difference if we blast it at once or we blast each layer at, uh, at a time? They've begun to do that with double blasts. We feel it. So the double blasts, we have to assume it's this fashion because we have no confirmation. But if they're doing double blasts and they're lessening the impact on us, why can't they do four blasts? Theoretically, take that one energy that we, we were experiencing that damaged our homes and divide it by four, a quarter. Theoretically, if you were to blast like that, each blast individual line would blast the same amount and it would still be the same effect. Why it's not that way, I have no idea. The reality is they, are, they do change the way they blast. We have uh, experienced it. We are experiencing the energy wave. We're experiencing the air pressure and the four different types of seismic energy being produced. They have been altering. Why cannot they continue to alter? If they're also, if they are altering, then is that admission that there's a problem? I'd like to sit down, bring to the table, and we come to a common ground so that we all can be together and, and live amicably between all of us. However, this problem is an issue, and it has to be addressed. There's a liability involved, and damages are happening to our structures. So that concludes the presentation, if we have any questions now. I have a question, several questions. Pretty much the bottom line, these, these miners have, have and have been destroying our homes for the longest time. When I saw the, uh, the cracks, this is the third time that I paint my house and that I epoxy it, so this is not new to me. When I see this, it comes back to my, my mind and it comes back and, and affects my pocket because that's every time I have to fix it. But I, I'd like to ask a question and now that we have uh, one of the attorneys here and we have uh, Tony as our councilman here. We're, th this is so extremely important that we've been talking about it. Miguel, thank you so, so much for your dedicated time that you have spent so, so hard, so much hard work. Where is and where have our manager and our mayor, mayor been to, you know, I, I'd like to talk to them because it's so important. Why aren't they here? This is, this is affecting all of us. The last time I saw uh, council, uh, Vice Mayor was here, he dedicates his time to come to these meetings. Now we have Tony, and now we have the, 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 the attorney. Where are our, the rest of our, our people that need to be involved in this, where are they? I'd like to ask them. Um, just uh, two things, um, the mayor and council approved for the committee to have this uh, presentation be given to the, to the community. So they hear you, they are supporting you, 
they don't have to be here every single meeting because you represent them. They, you are an extension of them at this meeting. In addition to that, I do need to mention that at 8.30 there is a following meeting, so um, if you could leave all of the questions and comments to the end, I'd, I'd appreciate that. The, uh, we're hoping that, that they're, they're, it's being recorded, Angelo, and, uh, and they do watch the videos. Um, and uh, as, um, as Clarisol mentioned, they're, they're allowing this to happen. So we, we, uh, we're hoping everything gets addressed and, is, and they're witnessing w the, the urgency that, that we're all experiencing. So that, uh, that's all I can say about it. Okay, I'll hold my question to the end and I'll, give the, uh, I'll put the uh, whipped cream at the end. Um, are there any questions on, online, Clarisol? Miguel, I, I just wanted to chime in. This is Councilwoman Ruano. I'm joining you guys via Zoom. Um, I couldn't be there in person today, but I am joining you via Zoom, and I appreciate um, the presentation this evening. Thank you, Councilwoman. Miguel, I don't see any uh, comments on the Facebook um, section, um, but we do have some uh, folks joining us on the Zoom call. So if... If any of you joining on Zoom um, have any comments or questions uh, for the chair of the Blasting Advisory Board, um, kindly unmute yourself and please provide us with your name and, and address for the record. Clarisel, this is Councilwoman Ruano. Hi, Councilwoman. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you. I just I wanted to take the opportunity to thank Miguel. Um, I've been uh, I've joined Miguel since the beginning of this journey, and I know that his presentations are always very educational. I always seem to learn something new every time every time that I hear you, Miguel. So I really really appreciate you putting this together. Um, is there anything Is there anything that you that you can that you see that we can do differently? And and obviously from the beginning of, of this journey. Our goal has been to coexist with the with the mining uh, companies. We know that putting them out of business or eliminating the mining industry is not feasible. So we what we're trying to do is coexist in a in a way that we can you know that our properties are not damaged. I know that there's different ways to mine these products, and we've talked about them you and I before. Um, is there anything new that you've discovered? I know that you've put you know seismographs and you've done a lot of, of more investigating since, uh, since we last uh, embarked on this a year ago. Is there anything new that you've found that might help us in uh, lobbying for, this, for the reduction in, in, the, in the blasting levels? I think right now that the biggest item that we should do is support uh, State Representative Tom Fabrizio with Bill 143. Uh, to, my Correct. to my knowledge, it hasn't been put on the agenda yet. Um, it removes the immunities right. that, that the miners have right now. Now, all of us, even to come here, um, we passed 100,000 or whatever, how many cars, and any of those cars, if we were to hit any of them, we're liable. We have insurance that, to carry uh, the repairs. So obviously we can't afford impacts like that. But we take liability for this. So if that being said, what's the difference for our homes being impacted daily and there's no liability uh, on, the, on the culprit doing the damage? So I think we need to level the playing field. I think the support of the, that Bill 143 is essential, um, and that's, that's a start. Um, Correct, and that is, that is exactly what the, what the committee recommended, and, and in last month's, uh, this month's council meeting, we approved, uh, we passed a resolution to support uh, House Bill 143. So we are in full support of that, and we are in support of the recommendations that your committee put forward as well. Correct. Um, we have given, offered different ideas, um, and it's a matter of coming to the table and, and thinking of different solutions. One of them is having some sort of fund where there is no liability per se to the miner, but the miner is the one uh, uh, funding the fund per se. That there, if there's any damage, then we can generate repairs in the cost and, and will come from that fund. So that's another way to do. Um, there, are, there are options. They haven't been entertained though. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll be I'll be happy to sit with you. I know that we've done it in the past. Be happy to sit with you um, and and talk and talk about all of those options. Thank you so much, Miguel. Thank you. 
Miguel, we have a question um, on our Zoom uh, chat, and um, it's from D. Medina, um, a resident of Miami Lakes, and their question is, I have cracks inside my house at every corner and on my tiles. Is this from blasting? I can't, without seeing the cracks, I can't um, definitively say yes or no. However, if they appear to be the damages that we're showing on, on the slides, I would guess that they are. But that obviously needs confirmation because cracks, believe it or not, there is a science behind them. Um, there is settlement cracks. There is, there is different types of cracks that happen. However, seismic cracks are specific. Um, so that, that, that would have, we'd have to look at that. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I want to thank you for this presentation. Again, it's very enlightening. Um, very clear and it's it's obvious that there uh, is a problem with blasting hundreds of our residents are suffering um, and I know uh, I want to thank Ms. Ms. Ruano as well for creating the blast advisory uh, board it's very important thank you for being here as well um, what's happening now I believe is just a matter of getting the support from the Senate side. I know that uh, uh, Representative Fabrizio uh, has put together the resolution, but a as of now, I do not think there's a senator who has also, or, or the Senate has also uh, jumped on locally here. So I, I think our, our local leaders, not only in Miami Lakes, but Hialeah and, and the different uh, municipalities that are affected, could use collectively to to speak to 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 that those representatives in the Senate, and uh, just ask them, at least put this on the table, put it to a vote. Uh, you know, let democracy decide. Agreed. Miguel but, um, Raymond, I just spoke to um, I call him Tom. Apologies, State Representative for Recio. There is a companion um, Senate bill, um, so it has been introduced. Um, We've come a long way, Miguel. That's great news. Great um, news. Uh, so they will be discussing it. Um, I would propose through the chair that we also ask the council and um, Councilwoman Marilyn Rhino to put a resolution to support the Senate bill, the companion bill to the House bill. The, uh, it, is, it is fair to mention though that the, the Senate companion bill is not complete, uh, it's not a complete companion bill. Um, so I think that, that we should be addressing this as well. Um, any movement obviously forward is appreciated, and obviously Councilman Rano, uh, hats off to you. <laughs> um, this wouldn't be, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you with, with what you had done from the beginning. Uh, Thank you for your kind forward. words. Um, but yes, I think, I think we need to put more pressure. I think now's the time. Now's definitely the time. Through the chair, a quick question. Uh, can I interject? We could talk all of the pretty things and all the laws of the book and of the land. I, personal, I personally think that what we need to do is take a fleet. I understand that we're going through COVID and all. We should have done this way before COVID. Take 20 buses down there. No more sugar coating for them. No more pretty stuff and get down there, and if I've got to be for the first one to, you know, get in front of all of them, I don't talk pretty, I don't talk Harvard, but we need to have at least a couple hundred or at least 500 people down there and let them know that we mean business, and enough is enough. And if we can have basketball games and baseball games at the Optimist Park and at Royal Park, I guess we can get together and get to Tallahassee. The, uh, Angela, I, I agree with you, obviously. The problem that, that we've been seeing, that I've been seeing personally, and, and I tell you guys that you're here all the time, and I appreciate you guys and thank you, is the community. The community wants things done. They want to have action taken, but they're not participating. They're frustrated. They're tired of, of hearing the promises and nothing happening. We need community involvement. 
We need community support and active involvement. So saying, yeah, I agree with you is one thing. The other thing is saying, I'm with you and I'm next to you is another. We need this. A thousand percent agreeable. Last year, I want to say, I brought Channel 6 over to the fire station on 154th Street in 77th, and I was able to enter the fire station, and they showed me in writing on, the, on, the, on their concrete beams every time there has been a blast, they put a line through it with a ruler, they put the date and the time it occurs. And every time after that, you don't have to believe me, go down to the fire station and see the fire station. It is destroyed. I don't know what else has, needs to happen, but I need to, but I definitely can tell you that we need to stop talking purdy to them because, you know, you can do all the beautiful things and talk all the beauty and they're, all they do is laugh at us. We need to take action. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I agree. All right. Anything else? Yes, sir. Um, I wanted to uh, bring to everyone's attention that there was a bill, Senate Bill 962, it was introduced by Senator Diaz, um, and it was uh, recently referred to Banking and Insurance uh, Community Affairs and Rules Committee. Uh, so it, it is uh, moving. And usually what will happen is if the Senate bill is a little different than the, the House bill, there'll be a committee of both members of the House and the Senate to go ahead and reconcile both bills. Uh, if, if it passes, obviously, both chambers. So. The, the Senate bill uh, encompasses the, the, the State Fabricio Fabricio's bill encompasses two main components. One is to lower the intensity to 0.15, uh, and another is to remove the, the, uh, the uh, protections of the minors. The Senate bill is only to lower the intensity. The fact is they have lowered the intensity and they're averaging 0.1. The legal limit is 0.5. So by lowering it to 0.15, in reality, they shouldn't have any uh, discrimi discrimination or any uh, counteraction towards it. They're already in compliance with that. The big meat on, on that bill is the liability issue. And unfortunately, the Senate bill, that it removed that, that portion. So we really need to address it before things are, get further along and, and too late. At this time, if there are any other participants on the Zoom call that have any questions or comments, please unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Mr. Chair, um, no comments on Facebook and no comments on from those folks on the Zoom call. I just, if I if I may add just one last thing. Uh, we did, uh, in, in 2019, I believe, we did the, uh, the bus trip to Tallahassee with respect to uh, the blasting concerns, and the town did fund a trip, and an entire bus uh, went to Tallahassee, except that the bus was not filled with a lot of individuals. So um, we have tried it, and I just wanted to address um, uh, Angelo's concerns. We tried it once, um, and it was, it was fully funded. But unfortunately, the, the community did not wish to participate. I know that Mr. Martinez was on that bus. He is, he is always uh, present and always you know, putting his time in to help with this problem. Um, Ms. Adelia Vore was also on that bus. Uh, but we were expecting a lot of uh, residents to want to participate, right? To want to go there directly and, and voice their concerns directly to our representatives. And unfortunately, the trip fell flat and the participation was, was very, very poor. There are no more questions. I believe 8 p.m. was our uh, cutoff time. Last chance to provide any comments or questions from those folks joining us uh, on Zoom. There are quite a few, but I don't. If you have any comments or questions, please do. Please unmute yourself. No, no questions, and I don't see any questions on our Facebook uh, chat either. 
through the chair. Does anybody have an idea how we can motivate these people? What you guys have been saying is so true. A lot of the neighbors are always crying and complaining. Oh, my walls, my, my pool. My daughter's one of them. She's got that issue with the, with the water bill. I think that with, um, we had um, our, our ex-vice mayor, uh, the firefighter, what's his name? Nelson. Nelson had the same issue. I think he had a $900 water bill one time. I don't understand why they don't they don't get off of uh, off their 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 sofa and, and 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 get involved. I wonder is there anything that anybody here has any idea how we can motivate them? I mean, we can't motivate them. They have to motivate themselves and come forward. Well, through the chair, I, I think I think that we are, and I understand your concern. However, that's why we're here to kind of take that that mantle for them and, and, and uh, try to push as much as we can. Right now, since there are bills going through, through the legislature, right now I think our focus should be on that. I think the biggest, uh, the best response or the best way for them to participate is to call their local senator and their local representative, give support to the bills, give support, see if the Senate bill could, could be amended to be a little more like the, like the the, the House bill, which will help. And if, if you hold them accountable financially, they're going to be more inclined to make changes, right? Until we hurt their pockets, but not in a way that's going to put them out of business because we're, we, don't, we don't want to put them out of business because they provide a, a service. But if they understand, if they do what's suggested, perhaps lower the blasting even lower, do it, do it in four blasts instead of two, that's going to help a lot. But if they see that they're going to, it's going to hurt their pockets, if the people of Miami Lakes and the surrounding areas give them a call and give pressure that way, it's a lot to, to, to ask somebody to pick everything up, get on a bus and go to Tallahassee. I mean, it, it, it is a lot. You're going to get the people that are going to do it, like us, who are, who are very uh, passionate about it, but there's some people who just can't. So I'm not to the point to blame them. What I'm saying is pick up the phone if you're listening to us right now, call your state senator, call your representatives, and ask them, tell them you support it. Use social media, emails, calls. Uh, I think right now, since we're going through this process right now up there in Tallahassee, now is when they need to hear from us. So yes, let's do the bus thing again, I agree. Uh, but right now I think they need to hear from, from, from the residents. They get, they get 100 calls tomorrow, they're gonna be like, wait, wait a second, you know. <laughs> Raymond, I don't know if you're aware, um, and I know that we have Councilwoman Marilyn Riano's support. She's, um, it takes a village. What you might not be aware of, that there have been over 7,000 emails sent to the blasting media page that has been created by Miguel Martinez. This yes. is currently as we speak. So the movement is happening. Yes. The problem is that they sent the email. I can send 50 emails because we do send numerous, but I believe we're over 7,000 and last year he had over 10,000. So it's not that they don't send the email, they don't, they do this, it just doesn't matter. So it, it needs our email, emails and phone calls don't work. We have to get in their faces. I understand. And I'm not saying not to get in their faces, but I'm saying now is the time they need to hear from us, from the residents and from all that. I just do not, would not try to push it on them and saying, well, you haven't done enough. You're not getting angry enough. You're not upset enough. I can tell you my sister has spent tens of thousands of dollars to redo her driveway. So they are very upset. Uh, I, I just would caution about pushing it on the residents that they're not doing enough. Um, I think everybody holds a little responsibility here. Our elected leaders do uh, as well. Um, so I'm just against pushing it on the residents that they haven't done enough. Because like you said, they've made 7,000 emails and made a bunch of calls. And this is recent. This is now with the House bill before the companion bill. But pr last year, when it was under 
Her name was Cin Representative Cindy. Cindy Polo. I'm sorry, Cindy Polo. Um, that time there was over 12,000 emails. So it's not like the residents, and I'm talking the Northwest District, not Miami Lakers. I guess what's sad is when you hear them all complaining that we're not doing anything, but we do, cannot make the change. It takes a village and it takes them part, being participating. They should be here. This was done for them. How many residents do you see here? How many residents do you see chiming in? Again, guys, I do not think, and I strongly believe, we should not push this on the residents, guys. I mean, this not is not on the why residents. we're here. I'm just saying. This is, this is the impression that we're giving by these statements with all due respect. And I know you have a lot of years experience in public service, uh, but we should not, as a blasting advisory board, push this on the residents and say, oh, well, we just decided they haven't done enough because I know they have, or they're trying. And so are we, and so are representatives, and definitely the council, and definitely Mr. Ron was on the line right now, and Mr. Fernandez was here, Councilman Fernandez was here. Um, so I, I, I think, you know, like, like, like a little drop of water on a rock, little drop of water on a rock, I know we don't see it, but it's gonna make a difference. If, if I may, I, I agree and disagree partially uh, on, on, on your statement. Um, the fact of the matter is our elected officials, the key word is elected, we've elected them. They need to be responsive to their electorate, one. Two, the people that are being affected, we're not asking them to, to go to Tallahassee, but we're asking them to do what they can, whatever it is. Please do whatever you can do, whatever it is, because I assure you, it's not being done. So if things continue status quo for our electorate, what's wrong with that? that, that you know, it, no pun intended, if we don't create a ripple, they don't know there's, there, there's a wave coming. So agreed, agreed. this is what's happening. Um, we need to create, we need to drop a boulder in the, <laughs> in the lake and create a tidal wave. Um, enough is enough. We're, it's that time already. We, we've created a movement. Things are rolling. Things are moving. Uh, Representative Fabricio, Cindy Polo, they've addressed this. Um, Senator Diaz has addressed it with the previous, with the respec study. He's one who pushed that forward. Unfortunately, the results of those studies, I don't think that they were uh, what we needed per se, but it was an awareness. At a minimum, we have awareness. Now, part of the 7,000 emails that, that is being mentioned the media has been included in those emails, so they're aware of what's going on. I've been interviewed numerous times, numerous reports have been done, but obviously it's not enough because we continue the same. So we need to, to, we need to change the track, whether it be, what it is, I don't know, but increasing the, the, the force of it, I think is, is a viable uh, manner. Through the chair. Um, let me make sure that I get myself clear uh, to you, Mr. Garcia. In no way, shape, or form. Raymond Garcia, he's not a commissioner. Well, I said Mr. Ray, uh, Mr. Ray Garcia. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me, ma'am. Not yet. Not um, yet. Let's make sure that I get this correct, as I said, the community. It's up to them whether they want it or not. Has your house been affected? Just tell me. You live in the town of Miami Lakes. Has your house been affected? Yes or no? Well, I live currently, uh, I rent currently, and yes, I have seen effects, but uh, I, can do, I do have family and friends who live here who their house has been affected, absolutely. What is your biggest investment? Is your home your biggest investment? Actually, my children's home is my biggest investment, yes. Okay, great. So. Let's leave it at that, think about it. We don't need, I mean, I, I, I think that the day that a home falls into a hole, a crater or whatever they call it, one of those sinkholes, I think maybe that would be the day of the wake up call for this blasting issue. I think that we don't want to wait for that to happen or somebody's home fall apart. So. Yeah, at no time have I, I don't think I've, my statements even come close to that. What I was, a, was opposed to is blaming the residents for not doing enough. I think the residents have suffered enough uh, because I spoke to hundreds of them, 
thousands of them. They've showed me their, their, their damages. They've suffered enough, and I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, you're not doing enough. That's why nothing's happening. I think no. everybody has to do a little bit more, including them. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. But what I was just saying to your statement was I'm not going to blame the residents for not doing enough. I mean, I'm not going to put it on them. I'm going to put it on the rock mining industry. I'm going to put it on, on our local leaders who are trying to do something, but obviously it's still happening, so they're not doing enough, but they're trying. Uh, but, yeah, I'm not going to be accused of not caring or not knowing what's happening. I totally understand and empathize with the residents first. So I'm not going to blame them for uh, what's happening. Let's make it clear, no one here is blaming the residents. Some residents, individuals in this room have been here for over 30 years. We are property owners. We don't rent properties. We have an, an investment in this town. We are not blaming residents. We're just asking the residents to support us because we want to keep our homes. That's, that's all we're asking. There's a chair. Right. My quick question here, and I'm going to close yeah. with uh, wrap this up. I, I've got a question here. We have the attorney here. And correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't there something that we were working on to take away the power, take away the muscle from, from the fire marshal's office and bring it and transfer it here to Miami-Dade County? Were we not working on something like that? It's part of it, yes. And if, if, the, if the bill 143 were to be approved and passed, um, it would roll up to Dade County jurisdiction. Yeah, the day that that, that that the day that that passes and we have it here the powers are transferred here I will make sure that there, there won't be enough space in Miami-Dade County over there to bring all the people it's it's not to transfer the fire marshal here but it's what it does is it, it creates that the fire marshal has to treat Miami-Dade County differently than it treats the rest of the state and the bill also has certain penalty provisions which uh, Mr. Martinez alluded to. So, so that's, that's the, the teeth that really the House bill has that the Senate bill doesn't. So, right. yep. so they're working on that. If it passes, yes. All right, so that concludes then today. Um, I make a motion to adjourn.